Dr. Fizz, the Laplace transform of a derivative in our course in theoretical physics. Here, we want to prepare the way for solving differential equations. Now, differential equations are going to have derivatives. So, how do we handle a Laplace transform of a derivative? Well, we simply take this derivative and insert it in our definition for the Laplace transform. Now I would like to move that d dt over to this other function since I could then take the derivative explicitly and simplify. And when I do that, I use the idea of integration by parts, which is related to the product rule of differentiation. Let's review this. I have a function f and I have a function e to the minus st, a product. I take the derivative of the product with respect to t, I take the derivative of the first one and multiply by the second here, and then I take the first function and multiply it by the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second brings down a minus s and the exponential then it remains and the f is simply the first function. Now the idea here is to replace this with this derivative plus the other piece. Now this gives me no concern because if I take the derivative of something and then integrate it, I'm simply going to get that something in here. See, that's nice. And then here, when that's on the other side, I'm going to have up in here the s, the f, and the exponential here with a plus sign because it's over here. And that is nice because s comes right out and that's the Laplace transform of f of t. Now here you got to be careful the function f can't be any function because we could get infinities here. Think of this as f divided by e to the plus st. e to the plus st is in the denominator. That must win out over f of t so that the denominator gets bigger faster and we have no surprises at infinity. So with that being said, at the upper limit we have 0 and then at the lower limit we have e to the 0th power is 1 and f is evaluated at 0 we have f of 0. The second term here is s times the Laplace transform capital F of s. This is very, very nice because we have the introduction here of initial conditions and in differential equations they're important. Like when you solve them in physics you'll have things like uh, what's x, the value at x equal, uh, well t is equal to zero and what's the velocity, initial velocity, initial position. So here we have the Laplace transform of the first derivative and what about the second derivative? Well for the second derivative we take g to be a derivative of something with respect to t, but look at it as a function and then apply the derivative to the g and find its Laplace transform and then later express g in terms of f because the g is equal to already one derivative. So let's do that. Let's take the Laplace transform of g prime of t and that will give us by applying this formula, it'll give us s capital G of s minus little g of zero. Now what about capital G of s? Well, if you come over here, capital G of s is the Laplace trans transform of g of t, but I already have done the Laplace transform here of f prime of t. I just simply copy this down over here. So that's the trick we have done to get the second derivative. Kind of like in physics, uh, when you have x as a function of time, velocity is the first derivative, dx dt, and acceleration is your second derivative of x with respect to t. But in terms of the, the velocity, the acceleration is only the first derivative. So we use that kind of a trick. And then we get this result, s squared times capital F of s and then s with the minus sign in front times f of zero and then over here I have minus this thing 
And what is that thing? Well, the g is the f prime, so g of 0 is f prime of 0. So here is your initial conditions, see, kind of like uh, in physics this would be your, like your initial position and your initial velocity in a standard mechanics problem. So we have the Laplace transform of the first derivative and of the second derivative and notice that the derivatives have melted away. In Laplace transform space derivatives become algebra and you can see now the power of the Laplace transform in anticipation of our application to differential equations.